Hi, just another quick video on the USB power supply. Now, I know this is completely out of order. I haven't done the uh, schematic, or I haven't been through the schematic and the design decisions and everything for this yet. Don't worry, I will get onto it. So I know it's completely out of order, but I was just uh, troubleshooting this thing, or well, I was about to, it needs some uh, troubleshooting because I've hit a bit of a snag with the uh, DC to DC converter down in here. You um, seen a previous video of me soldering uh, that thing, and it's a bit of a drama. Now I've gotten to a point where, cool, you know, I thought, oh yeah, I soldered everything together. I thought it all worked, so I did some firmware, and of course I got a hello world going. Here it is, ta-da, hello world. So it all works, so the firmware works beautifully, but the DC to DC converter in there doesn't seem to be switching on. And uh, well, I thought I'd troubleshoot it, might as well switch on the camera. Let's go. Now, of course, the first thing I suspected here was this pain in the ass, little 0.5 millimeter pitch uh, leadless chip, which we've looked at soldering before. They're a real pain in the ass. So I thoroughly inspected that. I even took it off and replaced it. And well, no, it, it exactly the same issue. Now I'll show you what's actually happening. I've got ground down here and let's uh, probe the input. If you have a look at the circuit there, this is the input to the DC to DC converter on this inductor here. You'll notice that it's 5.14 volts. Okay, so that's across C24 there. That's the input side to the inductor, pins 10 and 11 of the chip there. And of course, you can't really get down and probe the exact pin on the chip. It's not like, you know, an SO one where you can actually uh, probe the uh, pin down there. So, um, you know, you've just got to uh, inspect it and rely on the fact that, you know, you've inspected the joint and, uh, and it's all good. But we can do some resistance measurements. So let's switch the meter over here and let's... Uh, First of all, well, actually, no, sorry, I didn't finish showing you what the problem was. <laughs> Here we go. So the problem is we've got 5.14 volts on the inputs here, and we've got on the output 5.142, exactly the same voltage on the input and output of the inductor there, which shows that uh, the switch pins 7 and 8 there of the IC are not switching to ground, and this uh, DC to DC converter is not switched on. I don't even need my oscilloscope there to probe that switching point to see if it's switching or not. I know it's not switching. It's the exact same DC voltage. So clearly that DC to DC converter is not turned on. Why? And well, um, uh, what I uh, suspected is that it may have been something to do with Q2 uh, around there. And I've been, I've actually played around with the software in here. I've uh, been playing around for a little while and uh, so what I decided to do is short out Q2 and that's exactly what I did just take that out of the equation and I replaced R2 under there sorry R yes R2 um, it's supposed to be 12k but I actually replaced it with uh, 51k just to eliminate that uh, Q2 control aspect from the DC to DC converter so it should as soon as you power it up and apply 5 volts to the input it should give you you know, a much higher output voltage. It should boost it up, but it's not. The output voltage, and uh, of course we can see the drop on the diode here as well. Okay, here's the input voltage, 5.143, 5.143, and then the output side of the diode here is 4.98. So because the, the rest of the circuit is gonna draw some, uh, you know, some current. So uh, we've got a voltage drop across our diode there. It all looks quite reasonable. So I'm going to actually do some resistance measurements here. Let's switch it over. And of course the output's not going to be shorted. The output of the diode there, the power rail uh, VR there, that one's not going to be shorted at all. And you can measure it. It's jumping around. You know, we can auto range that to sort of, um, you know, give us like a ballpark of what's going on there. But it's definitely not shorted okay so it was confusing the auto ranger there mucking around it does that sometimes on various meters um, this fluke is no exception now uh, let's measure the feedback point which is pin if i look at the schematic pin three which is um the r6 in there where is it down down there that will be the feedback 
pin and there you go once again it's jumping up oh, there, there we go the feedback pin is roughly 10k and you'll notice that r6 there is 10k to ground so it's just under that so there's impedance there you know the impedance in parallel across that due to the feedback pin of the chip everything's just fine and if we measure the vr rail which is the output voltage which is here with that point let's so let's probe that and what do we get uh, it's it's a bit low it's supposed to be 51k but uh, that could be the input resistance of the uh, the input impedance of the chip let's swap the leads around so there could be something loading that down no that's there we go yeah it's climbing I mean it's supposed to be uh, 51k but you know it's got all sorts of uh, stuff in parallel with it so really um, uh, that like there's nothing shorted there doesn't seem to be anything open seems to be working just fine but this stupid thing does not start up now I've actually looked at this uh, under the microscope multiple times and it uh, definitely I mean it might look a bit messy there's lots of flux residue there I've been mucking around with the soldering on this thing but it, it trust me it actually looks quite good so <laughs> it's face palm time folks can you see the problem <laughs> I can see I just found it I've been looking at this for quite some time I've double checked things to make sure the components were in the right place and well I've overlooked it check it out look for C26 which is the capacitor which is the uh, bypass capacitor on the upper resistor R2 there where's C26 down here C26 Wah! fail I've bloody idiot I've put a 10k resistor in there 103 there it is I, that is supposed to be a hundred puff uh, uh, bypass cap for the upper part of the voltage divider for this DC to DC converter so uh, I've put a 10k resistor in there what an idiot so that's actually if you follow the trace in because it goes that goes through to here and then that point there goes up under there uh, up through under the diode there around to here through this resistor so it's in parallel with that 51k it's in parallel with that uh, what is it R2 there it's in parallel with R2 so that's it's supposed to be 51k but it's 10k in parallel with 51k no wonder this bloody thing is not starting up unbelievable oh man I've looked at this multiple times would you believe it and I did not see that couldn't see the forest for the trees that's what happens when you try and check your own stuff Murphy will get you every time what a pain in the ass man I've been thinking I've been changing this chip and I oh, inspecting it and scratching my head and doing all sorts of stuff and there it is a simple stupid component in the wrong place Grr. soldering iron time well that was pretty darn embarrassing man I thought it'd be something more obscure than just a stupid idiotic mistake like that but due to Murphy's I absolutely missed it actually I won't power that up yet let's uh, measure the resistance of this uh, point again you know how we're getting what 8 10k or something 8k before basically we're measuring um, R2 there there we go no it's uh, it's all over the shop it's jumping around it's confusing the auto ranger there let's uh, take that that's 600k let's put it there that'll do there we go 30 charging up boom no problem whatsoever and that should eventually well there we go it's going to settle on about 40 but it's yeah we'll get in you know 8 or 10k before which was kind of a, a dead giveaway really with uh, hindsight but um, you know it, it could have been the feedback pin 
on that uh, chip there causing, or you know, other stuff causing an issue um, to measure R2 in circuit like that. And uh, well, you know, eh, but there you go. Um, so we've replaced that, it should be good. So let's power this thing up. That should start, I think we're expecting about 7.6 volts out or something. Uh, because it will be uh, 51K, um, it's the upper resistor divided by the lower resistor. So 51K on 10K plus one times uh, the reference voltage of the DC to DC converter, 1.245 volts. Um, let's see what we get here, 5.1 volts in and Wah, fail, still fail, 5.11 volts out. This chip is still not going. Son of a bitch. Well, I just went and inspected and reflowed that chip again. I'm absolutely sure it, uh, you know, there's nothing else wrong now. <clears throat> yeah, I was absolutely sure before too when the stupid resistor was in the wrong place. But anyway, uh, let's give it a go. Output voltage. Hey, bingo, 8.14 volts. Uh, oh, actually that's, yeah, that's higher than the predicted value because um, the transistor is still uh, in place shorted out. There's R26 down there, which goes off to the rest of the circuit. If we actually lifted R26 there, uh, got rid of the rest of the uh, circuit, we would find that it would be on spot on to the predicted value. Hey, why not try that? Got the soldering iron. All right, I've removed R26 there and we should get reasonably close to our predicted 7.6 volts. Should be a bit of tolerance there. That's our output. There we go, 7.723. Near enough, I'm using like 5% resistors or something horrible in there at the moment uh, for that 51K. So that looks like uh, it is working an absolute treat. So there you go, there's uh, two uh, things there is the uh, bias, the, you know, the personal bias when you're inspecting your own circuits. I simply did not see that resistor in there, that uh, that one down in there, just did not see it. If we attempt to have a look at the joints of that chip under the Mantis microscope here, they look quite decent, good enough, and uh, but they looked like that before I reflowed the things as well. So, you know, obviously it didn't take on the chip somehow. So just something to watch out for, real pain in the butt, when in doubt, reflow. So there you go, that was a pretty easy, trivial fix in the end, and uh, a classic mistake there. There were two uh, mistakes. The first one was I simply had the wrong component in there. I stuffed a resistor in there instead of a capacitor. My brain was elsewhere when I was populating this thing. Eh, it happens all the time. And of course it was right next to a capacitor, which I, you know, I didn't really look at the circuit thoroughly and actually go through it step by step and check. And well, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Do not assume anything in electronics. I thought that, mate, you know, that capacitor, I think I know, know what my mindset was there. Oh, this capacitor was the one that was the bypass capacitor in the circuit. And no, I didn't look at the designators there and I had the wrong one. Absolute classic. And of course, the other one was soldering this pain in the ass, 0.5 millimeter leadless uh, chip. Real mongrel, I just had to reflow uh, the joints in there before I actually got the thing working. But hey, it's working now. I, I don't trust this package any further than I can throw it. If I'm getting issues hand soldering these things, I don't know what's gonna happen in production. Ugh, not getting a good vibe. I may end up changing that sucker. I don't know, but anyway, for now it works. And uh, there you go. That's a, a little troubleshooting of the uh, USB power supply. There'll be a lot more videos to come. Trust me, I just want to get this thing up and running first, actually doing what I want before I go through the whole design aspect of it. I know it's a bit back to front, but stick with me. We'll get there eventually. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.